make a, a, a comeback for this match. Hopefully for Yuri, he can have the redemption arc of losing in Swiss to your opponent and beating them in top cut. It does happen very often. Uh, obviously, the other way is true also if you have a strong matchup, but it seems like uh, potentially Yuri can be really strong with his Durant as a Dynamax Pokemon. We saw in top eight how strong Dur Durant is used effectively when it Dynamaxes. If he is using a bug attack with the max flutter by, that would be way to, one way to counteract the uh, Reuniclus from trying to set up as Reuniclus is weak to bug. That's one of its uh, its downfalls there. Uh, so super strong hustle, life four boosted uh, max <laughs> Flutterby from the Durant into Reuniclus might make Wolf question bringing it here or at least leading it in a Trick Room option. Someone else who also gets Trick Room who does much better against Durant uh, would be that Dust Clops on Wolf's side. So he does have two different avenues he can go for on Trick Room. And then some of the abusers he'd like to use are uh, that Rhyperior who who, uh, can can try to tank some damage from the other things on Yuri's team. Not too great against Gyarados or against Durant, but pretty solid against the rest. This team, funny enough, when we've seen it on stream, piloted by either Justin or Wolf, actually hasn't brought the Rhyperior as a part of their lead. So it doesn't surprise me at all that that's not what we're going to see either here. Yuri leading with the Togekiss and the Milotic, and we're going to see the Mimikyu and Togekiss for Wolf. So at least on turn one, there is no Trick Room option for Wolf. He has his uh, Togekiss to match Yuri's there. We can see a potential double Dynamax as we've seen many times before out of two Togekiss and they can try to match each other's max tailwinds, but we saw Mimikyu actually reveal Sword Stance in top eight on Wolf's team, so that would be a way for him to uh, counteract Melodic, who is typically trained very well in his defensive stats uh, and can tank def and can tank physical hits well. It might not be able to tank it as well if Mimikyu is able to Sword Stance. And that's exactly what it's going for. Mimikyu opting to Sword Stance, but we didn't really see too much coming out from either Togekiss yet, so it looks like they're going to go for the damage. Um, that's at least going to be a significant chunk of damage onto Wolf's Togekiss, and that Mimikyu's disguise going to get busted. Togekiss though for Wolf going for a yawn onto Yuri's Milotic. So Milotic is going to be able to get one hypnosis off Hits and actually hypnosis. ends up hitting even without a coil. Why take two turns to put something to sleep when you can just, just hit blind one. hypnosis on turn one? Yeah, well, that's really spectacular. That is, that's a great play out of him. Uh, even though he was yawned, so at the end of the following turn, if he stays in, he's going to have to be put to sleep. Uh, you'll gladly take that trade of putting your Milotic to sleep uh, by getting rid of the, the to Togekiss's actions here. There's no, op I really wouldn't recommend a Dynamax from Wolf on this turn since Togekiss is guaranteed uh, or somewhat guaranteed to, to be asleep in this setup. And now with a, a Swords Dance boosted uh, Melodic, anything, or excuse me, Swords Dance boosted Mimikyu, anything targeting that melodic slot will be hit very strongly. Well, it might not be time to Dynamax, uh, maybe, but maybe it is. You you mentioned that... Uh, Togekiss is safe for, for yeah, Yuri. Yeah, Togekiss is definitely going to be safe for Yuri. So that Togekiss is going to get that Dynamax factor and become larger than life right next to its partner, Raichu, that just switched in for that sleepy Milotic. And Mimikyu going for the Phantom Force, so it's going to vanish. It's not going to be able to take any damage. Yeah, Phantom Force, a nice tech that Wolf has put onto this team that takes two oh. turns, and that's and that's why you do it because it's you know it's better than protect. You're not taking 25% through protect from Dynamax. You're taking zero. Yeah, you're just you're, gone. You're not even on the plane of existence <laughs> for that Max Airstream to hit you. Yeah, you're just out of there. So Mimikyu not gonna take any damage from that Max Airstream, and now the speed boost doesn't happen for Togekiss or Raichu either. That's also huge, yeah, because obviously Raichu is uh, is traditionally faster than Mimikyu, and then if that airstream was was successfully uh, working for Togekiss the previous turn, then Togekiss would be faster than Mimikyu, uh, so he so Yuri would be able to double target that slot, and Wolf wouldn't be able to effectively use the Sword Stance, but uh, or the Phantom Force, but he's going to be able Oof. to. No, the Volt Tackle from Raichu is going to be able to get the knockout onto Wolf's Togekiss, which uh, was asleep for the entire thing. And Phantom Force going into the Dynamax Togekiss for Yuri. Now that Max Airstream definitely going to hit, and without that disguise, going to be able to take so much damage. Bringing the Mimikyu really, really low there. Uh, you see, that's a Swords Dance boosted Phantom Force that didn't even do 50% to Togekiss. Uh, didn't even bring it into the yellow, actually, on its HP bar. Uh, so that's how, that's how effective 
effective Dynamaxing is by doubling your HP there is that this Togekiss is still relatively healthy for its third and final turn of uh, of Dynamax. Ooh, but the Dust Cops go has the Frisk, so it's going to reveal that the Togekiss for Yuri has the weakness policy, and Raichu is holding the Focus Sash, which uh, would be broken at this point. Right, yeah. Raichu actually breaking his own Focus Sash with the Volt Tackle. Yuri seeming uh, to think that knocking out the Togekiss in one hit from Volt Tackle is more important than keeping Raichu's Focus Sash intact. I would tend to agree with him there, as now he doesn't have to worry about any shenanigans Togekiss wants to go for uh, for the remainder of this game since it's been knocked out. But now that you are, now that you do have your Focus Sash broken, uh, a potential attack would be able to take it down here, so Raichu does have to be worried. Uh, since Yuri's two Pokemon are now faster than the Mimikyu, this Mimikyu, if it doesn't have Shadow Sneak, won't get an attack off before it's knocked out. Volt Switch again going to do so much with this Raichu is able to get two knockouts now, um, but it is going to be able to switch out in this instance, and that's a great pivot for Yuri. And if du and if he had if Dusclops goes for Trick Room on this turn because he because Wolf was expecting Mimikyu to be knocked out, his sweeper in either Reuniclus or Rhyperior in the back would be moving faster under Trick Room, even more so now that this Togekiss has two speed boosts. Yeah, absolutely. The speed boost is going to go to the Milotic as well. So Trick Room, if it does be, is, if it is the option that Duckclaw goes for, and yes, it is, then anything that's in the back for Wolf is going to be moving fast. Really, really smart play out of Wolf there. Understanding that Mimikyu was no longer his win condition, even though he set up the Swords Dance. He just wanted to get as little chip as he could. Now that Dynamax is over, this Togekiss does not have that additional 100% uh, of its HP. So a, a rock attack into Togekiss, if it connects, will knock it out in that spot. Melodic, of course, is a great answer to the Rhyperior, though, as it is not threatened super effectively by anything Rhyperior can do. And it can hit it with a four times super effective water attack, that being Muddy Water or Scald or any other water attack Mimikyu wants to go for. And there's a Gyarados as well from Yuri. So that's going to be two Pokemon on the field that really threaten down this Rhyperior, but the Intimidate is the important part for this Rhyperior. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna that's gonna hurt him, and he's not even he's gonna be minus one with those uh, rock attacks. Ooh, but an ally switch from the Dusclops, so Rhyperior is going to switch places, so maybe this Dusclops is going to take the damage instead as it goes for a rock slide onto both Pokemon. Hoping for the flinch, but Milotic doesn't end up getting it, but Dusclops avoids that sleep. Melodic was trying... Oh, it's oh, actually got the Blunder policy. policy! That's awesome! A move with Hypnosis, it's 60% accurate, so you're going to miss it very often. With Blunder Policy, uh, you actually m increase your speed by one stage. That hurts in this current moment since Trick Room is up, but that's a great reveal for Yuri to, to let Wolf know that under regular conditions, this Melodic has a way of getting faster. Uh, this uh, Rhyperior does not want to be in against two Water-type Pokemon right now, uh, especially since he's been intimidated and does not have its weakness policy activated uh but uh, for this this right period can't switch out wolf is down to his final two pokemon so what can wolf do in these last few turns of dynamax to take advantage of it or these last two turns of trick room excuse me to take advantage of it what I'm really, I think, is, is super great about the way that Yuri is playing this is they're preserving the Intimidate again by switching in the Raichu, but it's time for Wolf to go for the Dynamax. We saw Yuri go for it very early on in the game, and Wolf's response is going to be Dynamaxing the Rhyperior, saving the factor for now, and that Rhyperior is going to be able to double its HP, which is so important. It makes Rhyperior such a tank. Dusclops is also going to side proc the potential weakness policy that's going to be on this Rhyperior, and that that's going to really hurt either the Melodic or the Raichu on Yuri's side. That's exactly what Rhyperior needed. Now, he only has one increased stage of attack because he was intimidated here, uh, but you still do want a... Uh, oh, competitive boost uh, from the Bulldoze is going to increase Melodic's special attack by two stages. That might not have been uh, an intentional or a... Uh, it's a byproduct of what Bulldoze did, but that's not what he was going yeah, for. But it doesn't matter. matter. It doesn't matter at all because the Max Rockfall is going to take out that Milotic before it can take advantage of that competitive boost. That was a crit. I don't know if it mattered. I mean, obviously, he's got the weakness policy boost, but Melodic can be quite tanky defensively. Uh, obviously, we'd have to check in uh, later on, do a calculation to see. But uh, for where it stands now, this Gyarados is going to have to switch in, or this Togekiss, who are both flying types, weak to rock attacks. And there are still a couple of turns of Trick Room left. 
and this Rhyperior has two turns of Dynamax remaining also. So Rhyperior's attack is back down to neutral, but at this point, uh, the Gyarados, since it's losing or uh, missing about 40% of its HP, a, a max Rockfall would be able to take it down. Gyarados going back, wants to try to get this Rhyperior below, yeah, below its uh, neutral attack stat. So Togekiss going to come in, but the Nightshade is going to connect with the Raichu. Is it going to be enough to get the knockout? And no, it's barely not enough. So this Max Rockfall, hoping to at least pick up the KO onto this Togekiss, which it does. Sandstream probably going to get be enough to knock out the Raichu too. Yeah, that's a, a really great turn with the Nightshade. So um, uh, it's actually not going to knock it out uh, from Volt Switch here. So he's going to preserve that by switching Gyarados and mm -hmm. getting a third Intimidate, which only puts Rhyperior at minus one because that's how strong weakness policy is. And now Raiju has access to Fake Out on this turn uh, because he's switching in for the first time here. So he has that Fake Out active that, uh, oh, he actually can't click because Dynamax there. So um, he doesn't need the Fake Out. If he has Protect, he'd be able to get through the final turn of uh of but of you could take out the dust clops well the, well no the dust clops is also ghost type too so oh that's true uh, that's so, true yeah that's the first thing i thought also but then <laughs> i I, for right? I forgot about it so typing uh so wolf is actually in a a, a very strong anti fake out situation mm -hmm. right true. now if they're the right you can't protect because they'll be knocked out from sand Gy Gyarados could potentially protect here and maybe be able to, to live yeah, the max Pokemon Rock Pokemon are going to be sure. moving first for, for Wolf, so that Nightshade will be enough to knock out the Raichu. You don't even need the Sand to help it. And no the protect. max Rockfall, too, will go into the Gyarados without a protect, and that's going to be enough to get the knockout. Wolf's going to take this first game. That's a really nice comeback from Wolf because uh, it looked like Yuri was uh, strong in the first couple of turns. He had two water types in there against the Rhyperior and Rhyperior still came out on top. So that's very impressive. Wolf deciding that what we saw work so well with this team earlier with the Reuniclus as a Dynamax and Trick Room uh, user was not the effective strategy since Yuri has a both Durant and a Hydreigon in the back that could hit it super effectively. So instead, Rhyperior making his uh, debut for this team or on this archetype in this matchup uh, and proving to be effective even through three Intimidates. I think something important on that last turn is that if the Gyarados didn't go, since the Gyarados didn't go for Protect, he might not have it. It could be a potential uh, Dragon Dance or another fourth mm -hmm. uh, move as a, as a coverage move on that, or he just didn't think he, it was important enough to reveal Protect in that matchup because uh, he didn't know he'd be able to, to live the hit, the hit through Protect and didn't want to give up that information. What was really heads up about the way Wolf played this is a lot of teams don't have an answer to a back end trick room and that's exactly what Wolf decided to set up because normally when you see the Trick Room come out, it's immediate and then you have some type of sweeper that's ready to go in, in the back that gets put into the game for turn two. So that's going to be something that Yuri has to think about when going into this next game is how do I deal with a potential back room, back end trick room setup? It's something that it really, it really plays mind games with your opponent because usually when you see trick room, you expect it as a lead or somewhat uh, a exactly. turn one or turn two option. And then when you have it uh, in the back there, it, it kind of made Yuri think that Wolf's other Pokemon that he led with were the priority win conditions like Mimikyu in that matchup and Togekiss. And it was not, uh, it was not the win condition. It was the Rhyperior, uh, you know, uh, hanging out in the in the background waiting for its moment to shine. It's a that cool was the strategy. Real condition. Yeah, that's it's pretty smart, I think, to uh, to Ooh. try to waste those turns and whittle your opponents down low enough for for your sweeper to take them out later. Well, it's going to be similar leads from Wolf, but not the same for Yuri. Yuri is actually going to be bringing the Durant and Togekiss while Wolf is sticking to that Togekiss and Mimikyu. Durant is uh, in heaven right now, seeing two fairy types on on the field for it to go for a max steel spike against uh, this this turn. We have not seen many Togekiss in this regional with a fire type move coverage of either Heat Wave or Flamethrower. Um, so if this Togekiss is similar to the meta call, it doesn't have a fire attack to hit this Durant super effectively. Uh, but since there are no fire Pokemon on Wolf team, you might be able to tech a fire attack onto the Togekiss if you have room for it. Durant goes for the max steel spike. The Babiri Berry from the Togekiss is going to mitigate some of that damage, but 
at least it will be able to. Oh, wow. no, it doesn't hold on at all. <laughs> it doesn't mitigate anything. Never mind. <laughs> that, you would think with the Berry Berry, the intent is to be able to endure a strong attack from Durant, but it wasn't the case there. No, it was not. I mean, this is the, the second time that we've gotten a chance to see uh, Togekiss get one hit knocked out. Durant's just coming in strong. And now this Dazzling Gleam is going to be able to knock out this disguise, no problem. And this Mimikyu is going to be a little bit more vulnerable now. Right now, that doesn't have that disguise. It can uh, it can take damage, but oh, the Mimikyu the has Trick Room also. So there's three potential Trick Room setters on this team, and Mimikyu showing it off here now, uh, s twisting the dimensions. And if Rhyperior wants to switch in in this spot, uh, he would be the fastest Pokemon uh, to move. <laughs> yes, Ry it is. Rhyperior could try to hit the Durant if he has a, uh, a tech move for it here. Uh, but if Durant wants to hit Rhyperior. With with Max Steel Spike, uh, that would, you know, it's not going to be as strong as he would wish if, especially if, there, if uh, the uh, Rhyperior goes for Dynamax. Rhyperior thrives in Trick Room and thrives under the Dynamax conditions for sure. So I think that would be a strong play for Wolf. But as we saw in that game one, Wolf wasn't a stranger to kind of be patient with that Dynamax and really not go for it as soon as they were available. Yeah, and with Mimikyu here, uh, it does set up Trick Room, but at the downfall of being a traditionally fast Pokemon, that means it doesn't really take that much advantage of its own Trick Room. So this really, the onus is really on Rhyperior on these five turns of Trick Room uh, to, to start taking advantage of it. Gyarados still being a bit of a problem for this Rhyperior, but the Rhyperior is going to be able to Dynamax here. Yeah, obviously, you know, it's just what Wolf needs to do in this mm -hmm. situation. Yeah, absolutely. So Dynamax Factor going to that Rhyperior. No weakness policy activated just yet, but if it does, it will only have one extra stage of attack. We haven't seen whether or not this Mimikyu is capable of side proccing that weakness policy, so Rhyperior is just going to have to take this one minus stage attack onto this Gyarados, but it's not enough. Oh, but it will be enough It will be with the, the sand. sand. That's huge. Not enough by itself, but the sand helping uh, Wolf a lot. But Never wait mind. a minute. Never mind. Wait a minute. There's going to be a berry on this Gyarados, so the Citrus Berry going to be able to bring it out of that knockout range from that sand. And if Mimikyu went, or if this this Durant goes into that Mimikyu slot, which is exactly what happened, now he avoided it. Again, with the Phantom Force, I think that's such a cool tech onto that Mimikyu, helping out Wolf's position in this game, not once, but twice now. And that's another turn of Dynamax that's stalled out from this Durant. Mimikyu might be a slow Pokemon under Trick Room because it's actually fast, but something worse under Trick Room is Durant because it's considerably faster. Uh, so by Mimikyu being better under Trick Room, he's able to Phantom Force, and it it works as like a, a pseudo protect essentially does not give Durant or this Gyarados an additional uh, defensive increase from the max steel spike also. So no damage and no buff either. That's two really important things for Wolf. Togekiss for the Gyarados's place. Right here it goes for the max player. It's showing off that it does have an ability for that tech move. And at that minus one attack, it's still gonna be enough to knock out the Durant. You have to have a fire move somewhere, wow, right? Wow, a critical hit on top of that. On on a, on a team that does not have a fire type Pokemon, you can't show up to, to Collinsville. You can't fly all the way here and have no Durant matchup. So Rhyperior showing off the, the Max Flare was critical. It was absolutely critical. Mimikyu going for the Phantom Force was probably hoping to knock out that Gyarados, but Tokugis is going to take that like a champ. Yeah, Tokugis takes a little bit of damage there. Uh, of course, any anything can help here as the... The Rhyperior has, uh, is still pretty strong with its Dynamax here on its third and final turn. Melodic does enjoy being in against the Rhyperior, so you can try to hit it with a Scald or a Muddy Water or any water attack that we still haven't actually seen revealed from Melodic. Melodic's pretty slow, especially compared to Mimikyu, so it will be mm -hmm. moving second in this situation. Rhyperior will get the max Rockfall off potentially into either Togekiss or the Gyarados, which as we have the, the switch out here, that's a nice intimidate for it uh, to lower the attack. But this Melodic can try to go for another blind hypnosis or a super effective water attack. Mimikyu's attack and the Rhyperior's attack going to fall, so the Rhyperior is at minus two. Mimikyu, though, going to switch out, and here comes in Dusclops. Dusclops was the fourth Pokemon that Wolf brought to that second, uh, that first game that we just witnessed, and here's the max Rockfall. Is it going to target down this Gyarados? It is, and Gyarados is already so low that that minus two attack drop doesn't matter. 
Definitely not. And now what he can do the following turn is activate his own weakness policy from Bulldoze from the Dust Clops. Oh, but you gotta be careful about the Milotic too, because Milotic's going for the Hypnosis, but it misses. Oh, and there's the huge. Blunder policy. Yeah, that's actually uh, really bad. Again, just like in game one, the blunder policy makes him even slower in Trick Room. So uh, the Modic is, is essentially a full health. It only took one turn of Sandstorm uh, tick damage there. Uh, but a from the Bulldoze, which will lower its speed but increase its special attack because of Melodic's competitive uh, abil or competitive ability increasing his special attack there. Maybe he can he can live a hit now, especially since Rapierior is not Dynamax. Have that boosted special attack. Uh, and knock out this Rhyperior in one hit. That might be what uh, Yuri's game plan is in here to try to force a game three, because otherwise I don't see how Togekiss specifically is going to break through a, uh, a Mimikyu and a Rhyperior. Yeah, going to have to get a lot of crits um, if that's the super luck ability on that, on that Togekiss. But I definitely agree with that. But I'll, I'll, of course, Wolf still has that Mimikyu in the back, so may as well preserve it, not go ahead and go for the Bulldoze yet until they get that chip damage onto the Milotic or this Togekiss to get the knockouts that they need. Togekiss going for a Dazzling Gleam, um, which is going to do some chip to Wolf's Pokemon. But Milotic goes for the Coil, doesn't want to miss a Hypnosis another time. That's a really cool tech from Co from Coil M Melodic there on Yuri's team. I'm sure that's helped him out a lot through Swiss rounds yesterday and to get here to top four today. Uh, it will not only increasing his accuracy, but also increasing the defense there. As Trick Room does return to normal, now Melodic is really fast from that blunder policy before, uh, so it'll be faster than everything else on the field. And he can try to hypnosis this Dust Clops uh, to stop it from resetting up Trick Room for another potential sweep from the Rhyperior. But if Mimikyu also has the Trick Room, uh, it's going to be hard to stop both of them. Yeah, so Hypnosis is going to find its mark onto the Dust Clops with that Coil accuracy boost. That's going to be no problem for that Milotic to hit. But Mimikyu doesn't go for the Trick Room. It actually just goes for the Play Rough. Togekiss is within potential knockout range of the Sand, but this Air Slash is go going to also keep this Mimikyu in range too. And Sand is still around, so they're actually going to take this damage from Sandstorm. Is it enough? Definitely it does enough. take out Mimikyu. There it is. It's going to take out the Mimikyu, and Togekiss is also going to get buffeted by that storm, and that's going to be enough to get the knockout onto the Togekiss as well. It's just my Lodic versus the last two Pokemon that Wolf has in this Dust Clops is asleep. And the, the Dust Clops is asleep, so he can't go for Trick Room. And this Rhyperior is about to get uh, uh, about to get attacked from a, a super strong Melodic with, a, with any water attack he wants to go for. So it seems like Yuri, with that Blunder policy, prolonging the match long enough to make it through Trick Room has made him fast enough to uh, get those hypnosis successfully onto the Dust Cops there and stop Trick Room from getting up again. Oh, but Milotic's going to go for a coil. See, there's another part of that coil that's really important, and it's going to be that defense boost for the Melodic. So even though this Rhyperior is going to be at full power, uh, it's still going to take those high horsepowers like a champ, but Dust Cops lights up. It goes for the Trick Room. That's why you can't just sit there and hope he stays asleep, because now Trick Room is up. Rhyperior is able to take advantage again, and anytime you want to try to hit it with the water attack, you're just going to give him the weakness policy boost. You don't even need it because Dust Cops is going to activate it himself on this turn with Bulldoze. Yeah, the Bulldoze is, rem remember that the Bulldoze is also going to activate the competitive boost from the Milotic, so you still have to be a little bit careful about that, so I understand why. Oh, he doesn't why. even need it because no. Nightshade High Horsepower Nightshade High it. Horsepower, that's going to be enough to get the knockout. Wolf is going to be your first finalist. That is crazy.